Okay, we are back here with Hold and Modify. This is Q, presenting YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yes, we have got a new big box in a big box. It's been a while, but uh, I think the 2500 was the last one I had here. We got a little bit of shipping damage, but uh, I've been rest assured that this has been packaged extremely well. It uh, didn't have to come too far, but as you can see, they do get a little beat up. So, uh, get this opened up here. All right. All right, so let's see what we've got. We have, okay, we've got our bubble wrap. I love the bubble wrap. Ooh, squishy bubble wrap. I don't like the little foam things though. Ugh, yuck, anyway. All right, so let's get this go, no. Okay, let's get this sucker open. Yeah, this is a lot of bubble wrap. Okay, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to get off here. This stuff just sticks to everything, and man, it really reminds me of, um, well, I mean, yeah, what do you think? Yep. Okay, so we've got her out of the clutches of the alien goo, and this is an amazingly clean 4000. Uh, man, my 1200, my 500, my 1000, and yes, even my 2500, I've been so fortunate when I buy these things that they, they come out so clean. I really do try to wait for clean ones because I don't like to retro bright. I like to get them as is, and hopefully they're in great shape. And once again, this 4000 is immaculate. Um, and there's a lot of reasoning behind that, so we'll get into it here. So yeah, let's get a good look at this keyboard. And what this uh, 4000 is and how it got to me like this was Chris Edwards, our, our favorite Amiga Yoda, came across uh, an Amiga 4000 for a pretty good deal but it was pretty beat up. Uh, it needed a lot of work inside and out. And he went ahead and took it on with a commitment for me to buy. And uh, he did an amazing job. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up some uh, before and after type photos here in a second, but I wanna just look at the work he's done here on this back panel. And then, yeah, that plastic cover on the port there, that's from the factory. You never see that. It's never been removed. It's still been there since day one. This Amiga sat in an entertainment rack, like a video rack, and all it did was process video all day for its entire life. So it is truly a one of a kind. So here we are in this montage, and as you can see, the 4000 was really filthy, just dirty, 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 birdie. And Chris went at it and just started tearing into it, ripped it all apart, and he you know, washed it. <laughs> Like you've seen many folks do. He got in there, scrubbed it, sanded it, resprayed it to make it all nice and shiny again. Just so much work went into this and it looks beautiful. I mean, gone is the rusty, scratchy, dingy. The plastic looks great again. And he didn't do any kind of chemical retro braiding. He does the sun-based retro braiding, which works wonders. Uh, he ripped into the power supply and discovered it was kind of a custom job, which makes sense for the professional use that this 4000 saw. But yeah, he did great stuff. He printed this custom 3D bracket for the hard drive. And now we've got this beautiful 4000 to dive on into. Isn't that great? And speaking of diving in, let's have a great close up look at all this amazing cleaned up work that Chris Edwards has done here. This is, uh, this is phenomenal. This looks like a brand new Amiga 4000. It's so clean. I mean, everything, the RAM sockets aren't busted up. The batteries were in place. There's no damage around the battery, none. Look at those chips. Those things are normally toast. They're absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. Super clean, it's just incredible. This is total Amiga porn. I know I don't really do this too often, but I'm, I'm just gonna drool over Amiga porn for a bit here. Yeah, this board just looks so incredible. I've had such bad luck with some things. I mean, my, my Amiga 3000 has been a complete and total disaster, and Chris and John are working together to try and help me with that, but at least this, this has turned out. This 4000 looks great. And I wanted to highlight the cool custom 3D printed bracket for the hard drive that Chris made for me. Um, it holds the uh, SD IDE drive here. I'm gonna run an extender cable out and probably dangle it out the back there. So I have quick and easy access to that SD card. And of course, don't ever do it while it's powered on. I always do that when it's powered off, but that's pretty slick. And there's another good shot of the board and how clean it is. That's the, uh, the 68040 card from Commodore. Probably going to be replacing that with a 68060. Stay tuned. Okay, I've got the 4000 uh, plugged into the old hold and modify 
cavern of delights and joys. Too many Amigas running at the same time. They all just turn on when I turn the main plug on. Uh, I don't have the top on it yet, but that's because I just want to make sure everything's going to work and because it did get shipped. I want to make sure everything's tight. But I got her plugged into my ViewSonic, which is compatible with classic Amiga modes. I've made a video about this monitor about a year ago. Uh, I think it is still available, but it is only compatible with classic Amiga modes. It means it does not work with multi-scan mode. It doesn't work with double NTSC. It doesn't work with productivity type stuff. It works with like, you know, PAL and NTSC, high res, high res lace, low res, low res lace, those modes. So let's uh, fire it up and see what happens. Oop, got lights. Lights are good. Like lights. Oop, all right. You can hear that floppy cycling. Looks like it's thinking. And the SD hard drive is definitely thinking. The monitor is flickering and doing monitor stuff. That's a good sign. Oh, hard drive light just flickered. All right, oh, it's booted. Oh, here we go. Hey, well, that's a win. That worked. All right, 3.2.1 and a bunch of, obviously there's a, a bunch of things going on. Oh, it's the clock and it's actually working. What a concept. Okay, so uh, yeah, this kind of has a, um, a kind of a quick 3.2.1 uh, system on it that uh, Chris had put on it for me. Uh, I think it's just a stock install. Then he'd put some extra duders on this other hard drive for me. So yeah, let's do the, uh, let's do it. Come on, let's get out of the way. Yep, I know. Here we go. This is uh, version four, by the way, if that really matters. This is an original Amiga, so that should be fine. It doesn't matter what version it is. Speed, go, go, baby, go. What do you think, Motorola? Is that what we're going to get? Look at that. Well, at least according to this, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. And uh, yeah, motor rolling. There we go. We are motor rolling. Sweet. And how fast do you think this drive is? DH0 speed. Let's go. 1.6. Let's click it again to make sure there's no cheaty buffery things going on. Yeah, 1.6. All right. So everything is on par with all my other Amigas in the happy family here. Good. This is good. All right, folks. Well, I mean... Awesome, the Hold and Modify Pork Amiga Extravaganza has a new member, the Amiga 4000, and it's just as pretty as everybody else here. I've been using the 1200 as my workhorse because it has the uh, 68060 in it. So what I want to do next, not in this video, this video is long enough, the next thing to do is, since I want this to be my new 3D animation workstation for Amiga stuff, I'm going to put my 68060 from Phase 5 in here and I'll run my uh, Picasso 4 card. And this will finally be my Super Amiga 4000. And then I'll have this amazing uh, Amiga 1200 with its 060, its TF1260, is kind of my secondary machine, my backup or other render buddy. Now again, I generally don't like to do 3D rendering on these real Amigas. I usually put that over onto emulation on the PC because I don't like burning these guys all night. And of course, what does that mean? We're finally going to be able to do it, folks. I'm finally going to be able to put the Phase 5 68060 and the Amiga 4000 up against the TF1260 68060. Both use the same exact 68060 real CPU. So it'll be very interesting to see the differences in speed. Now, of course, the 1200 is a Zoro 2 type configuration with its 1632 hybrid type setup, and this is the full 32 bit. So this is obviously going to be faster, but I was very curious to see what the uh, differences in speed will be actually between the two. I have a bunch of benchmarking videos I've done on this channel, and uh, whenever those come through, everyone gets really excited and they check them out and everyone starts making their own comments. So. I look forward to finally benchmarking these two against each other with their 060s, and I hope you look forward to it too when that video shows up. But thanks for watching, the Amiga 4000. It's kicking ass. It's working. Man, how cool.